Hi and welcome to the part 4 of Orthodontic Records webinar. This chapter is about dental photography technique. Framing and composition. The extra oral photographs in orthodontics are frontal photographs, frontal smiling photographs, right or left profile photographs, smiling profile photographs, a quarter profile photograph, and submento photographs. Frontal photographs. In frontal photographs, eyes should be open and looking into camera, face, ears, and neck should clearly be exposed, Interpapillary line should be horizontal to the frame and the approximate center of the frame. The smiling photograph should be the same format of the frontal photograph with a natural smile added. In lateral profiles, the teeth should be in occlusion, lips should be relaxed and in contact. Natural head position with eyes looking forward should be established. Entire head and neck should be displayed. The, the head should be approximately in the center of the frame and maybe one centimeters anterior to the center of the frame. In lateral smile, the same format of the profile photograph with a natural smile added should be taken. For extra oral photographs, we may also add quarter profile and a quarter smile profile. And in cases with asymmetry, a submento photograph can also be added. Framing and composition for intraoral photographs. According to the guidelines of American Board of Orthodontics, the occlusal plane should be horizontal to the frame. There should be equal display of the posterior dentition on right and left sides. Teeth should be in occlusion and we should be very careful about saliva and debris. Lateral intraorals should display both of the maxillary central incisors. Posteriorly Include the entire first molars at minimum. All the attached gingiva should be visible and occlusal plane should be parallel to the frame. Occlusal photographs. The mid palatal suture or roughly should be centered. We should frame the entire arch with minimal lateral soft tissue displayed. In occlusal photographs, our lip retractors are very important. We should retract all the soft tissue as much as possible. We should fill the frame with the entire mandibular arch, at least through the first molars. The level surface of the central incisors should be parallel to the bottom of the frame and the midline should be centered in the frame. Lighting. Light is the most important component of photography. Without light we can not take a photograph. So what does light do? 
light makes objects visible, emphasizes colors, emphasizes the depth and volume, and it highlights the details. There are two kinds of light sources, natural light and artificial light. In dental photography, we don't use natural light. The color of the natural light changes according to the time and the weather conditions of the day. Plus, sun cannot lighten a patient's mouth. So what are the light sources for dental photography? We can use para flashes for extraorals and macro flashes for intraorals. Almost every camera has a pop-up flash. Basically it's the own flash of your camera. A pop-up flash is located on top of a camera and when used with macro lens you create hard shadows in your intraoral pictures. They are not good for intraoral photographs. It's the same for extraorals. You see it creates big amount of shadow under the neck. Or if you hold the camera rotated to one side you will have shadows on the other side of the patient. Ring flash. It is the most popular intraoral flash in dental photography. It's good and cheap. It's easy to use. Good for orthodontic photographs. No shadows at all, which makes your photographs look two-dimensional. Here is a light direction of a ring flash. If you send a direct light to a shiny object like teeth, too much light will reflect from the image back to your camera and you will lose too much detail. It is also not powerful enough for extra oral photography. The best light source for intraoral photography is the twin flash. The twin flash allows you to use the light in different angles so that you can create a more detailed photograph. Okay, para flashes. These flashes are the best equipment to take good extraoral pictures. On camera flashes that we talked about are all for intraoral photography. They cannot give enough amount of light for extraoral photographs. The principles are almost the same for extraoral photography. Two para flashes should be used bilaterally to have a good extraoral Photo. In extraoral photographs, you may either use a black background or a white background or any other color you would like. And this is the end of our webinar about orthodontic records. Thank you for listening.